Hey, what's up guys? I'm Styler and today I'm going to review the Blue Boot D1 in black, an affordable dual camera smartphone from China that currently goes for only 79 US dollars, so it's super cheap. It's a compact 5 inch HD model with fingerprint scanner, a special white multicolored notification LED, removable battery and metal backside, and it of course comes out of the box with Android 7.0. The specs are not the best, but for the price still ok, as you can't expect that much for 79 US dollars. It is powered by the MediaTek 6580A quad core clocked at 1.3 GHz. It has 2 GB RAM and 16 GB storage, an 8 MP main camera supported by another 2 MP sensor, while on the front it has 5 MP for selfies. It comes with a pre-installed screen protector and an English quick start guide. The phone unfortunately doesn't support fast charge, so it will take about 2 hours to fully charge it. Because of the compact size, it is possible to use with just one hand. The thickness though is on 8.7mm, so it's not exactly the slimmest. It feels pretty comfortable and solid in the hand, and similar to the bigger Blue Boot Dual. But because of the front and the plastic parts used on the back, it still feels a bit cheap and the metal backside is really a fingerprint magnet. Regarding the camera quality, normal pictures taken with the main camera is ok in daylight, but far from fantastic, and it seems very sensitive, so you really need a steady hand if you want good pictures. And in low light conditions, they are barely usable. The dual camera functionality is just like on the Blue Boot Dual, just a gimmick, because it doesn't really focus on an object, Mostly it just blurs everything outside a circle in the center. It is possible to make some funny pictures with that effect, but nothing more. The sound from the bottom speaker is very flat, the volume is a little bit above average thanks to the two cutouts on the back, but seems to distort a bit at the highest level, especially when you play songs with bass, which the phone doesn't manage good at all. The micro USB port is placed on top, which is rarely seen, and the sound coming out of the 3.5mm headphone jack is good and pretty loud, so it's fine for music and YouTube, and the side buttons are solid and responsive. OGG is unfortunately not supported, so you can't connect a USB drive to it, which is very sad. The fingerprint scanner is placed on the back, and it works most of the time good, but it is kind of slow to react. It can be set up to be used as a home button, back button, answer and shutter button, but you can also use it in the music and video player to switch to the next track. The front have some pretty big bezels, and to be honest, the front glass feels very cheap, and I'm not really sure that it is real glass, because it almost feels like plastic. The 5 inch screen uses HD 720p. It's sharp and vivid, but it only supports 2 point multi-touch and the viewing angles are not the best, and I don't think it's IPS. Also the brightness is just what I would call acceptable. It seems a bit dimmer than other devices I have tried lately. In the top beside the 5 megapixel front camera, we also find a front LED flash. When it is totally dark, it does help a little bit when you're close to it, but in normal daylight this doesn't really help much. 
The quality of the front camera is nothing to talk about. It is not really great at all and in the dark pictures look very blurry. It has three capacitive touch buttons with no backlight and below these there's a white multicolored notification LED which you can also set up to cycle through the colors when you use the stock music player. And it will also light up in a solid red or blue when it's low on power or when you charge it. It's your Smart wake is also supported, like double tap to wake and screen gestures. And you can flip the phone to mute it or use smart answer call, where you just put the phone up to your ear when it's ringing and it will pick up the call automatically. The metal backside of the phone can in fact be removed and below we find a removable battery on 2600 mAh, which just makes it through the day with light usage. The technical design of the back is very old school, so there are two micro SIM slots and one micro SD card slot. And in the bottom we only have one speaker, even though the back cover has two cutouts. For gaming, most games run good with medium settings. When I say good, I mean they are playable with some frame drops, but of course far from as smooth as on a OnePlus 3 or Samsung Galaxy S8. In the YouTube app, normal videos played fine in the screen's highest resolution of 720p, but I did experience some lag when I tried to play videos recorded in 60 frames per second. For some reason, they didn't play that well. While the browser ran fine, smooth scrolling and fast loading speed on most pages that I tried. The UI is simple and fast with some few modifications and extra settings. Multitasking works decent, but keep in mind that it only has 2GB of RAM. And that's why Bluebo added a pure background option in the settings, which means when turned on, it will close the app when you leave it, and that way not fill up the RAM. On the other hand, this also means that the app can't send you notifications when it is completely closed. Because of Android 7, it also supports the split screen feature, which is nice to have, but kind of hard to use on such a small screen. A downside is that there is no gyroscope sensor or compass built in, so you will not be able to use it with Google Cardboard. There are only few sensors in this phone, and regarding the connectivity, the phone only supports 2G and 3G, so no 4G. And it doesn't have dual band Wi-Fi, so only 2.4 GHz is supported. But I guess that are the sacrifices that you have to deal with for the overall cheap price of this phone. The NT2 and Geekbench score is not especially high on this device, but it didn't come as a surprise, because I didn't really expect much more from this MediaTek chipset. The GPS works, but it does take some time to get a lock, and the signals are not exactly the best as you can see. If you really need a reliable GPS device for navigation, I would probably find something better, but in an emergency it may be better than nothing. Overall, the Bluebo D1 is pretty decent for a low budget phone that only costs 79 US dollars. Sure, it's not the greatest, but it's also not the worst I have seen for the price. It performs good enough for normal non-demanding tasks, so it's a perfect spare phone that you actually can afford to lose, or a phone for smaller kids who don't have so high requirements, but still want to play around with all the features from the bigger flagships like the dual camera front LED flash and fingerprint scanner. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Drop a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for more. Thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you in my next one.